All right, we're back, and it's time to get into the fun part, actual code. Okay, so we're going to be doing a lot of different things in a little bit of siloed manner throughout the rest of this course. Uh, I have kind of drawn some very broad strokes in terms of the different areas that we're going to cover, but a lot of the cases it's just going to be specific topics. And I think this will be handy for you to be able to come back to occasionally when you're uh, running into a specific error that you remember I talked about just come and get a little mini tutorial in each section uh, that's relevant to you. Uh, so in this first section I really want to go over some of the basics that I find are just constant and normal and everyday things that you are doing when you're building online maps. Some of these aren't the easiest things that are in Leaflet, but I do think they are some of the most basic things that you actually need to functionally get used to doing. So we're going to go over just very basic shape stuff, basically looking at our introduction file and a little more that we did last time, maybe giving a few more options to things. Um, then we're going to go over pop-ups and icons, which is a really big topic. It might take a couple of videos to get through. There's all kinds of custom icons and um, the pop-up windows that when you click them, a little info window shows. Uh, they go by diff different names and you know, style them individually and all kinds of things. We're going to look a little more at GeoJSONs. We talked about that in the data section, but uh, now we're going to actually use them, load them in. Bounds, this may be a somewhat small section, but I think it's very crucial. Bounds has to do with uh, just how, what, what is the specific area of the map that you're looking in and kind of centering the viewer so that all of the information you've added shows properly. Say you've added like 30 or 40 different markers. Uh, let's say you're a real estate, real estate company to represent certain properties. You want the map to show all of those when it loads properly. And even if you end up adding a few more properties, you want it, the map to adapt and still show them all. Uh, that's going to make a lot more sense when we actually tackle bounds. But I just wanted to point out it's a little bit weird for me to put this in the basics, but I think it's so um, central uh, to making maps that it belongs here. We'll touch on events. Um, we're going to just go over very quickly, or try to go over quickly, uh, the way that Leaflet fires events. We're going to hook into those events a lot more when we're working with filters in particular and some of the advanced topics, but uh, they're very important to maps. And finally, we're going to touch a little bit on design, but we're also going to, um, we're just going to kind of look at a few maps online. And then in the section after, we're going to go more into some uh, specifics about what we can do for our designs. So okay, let's uh, start off with our shapes. So we're going to look at markers, polygons, circles, some other basic things like base map choices, and zooming and centering maps. And there's a couple terms we're going to run into, polygon point, line string, these kind of geographic information. Uh, we're going to basically style these in very simple ways, or at least I'm going to direct you towards in Leaflet where you're going to find out how to style them. So let's get out and let's get started right away. So we have our quick start again here. This is just the file that we set up. It should be local here. It should not be the example directly because we need to edit it. So if you haven't done it, go to a leaflet um, slash tutorials uh, slash examples, get the quick start, copy that code into a local file and load it. So let's go look at it a little more. We already had set up this option last time. I'm gonna get rid of this option and just have the map load here with uh, zoom controls. So there they are. So first thing I want to do is I kind of want this map to actually be like where I am. So I'm going to go to geojson.io and I would recommend you do the same. And I'm not going to get the map from last time. And I'm just going to go find my location, wherever your location is, just generally. I'm going to put a point. I'm here in Vancouver. And I've got a couple coordinates out from that. So using these coordinates, I'm going to use those as the new center of my map here. So we have a couple of coordinates. So let's see if our map loads properly when we do this. So it seems to load in a strange place or there's some kind of problem. Now, I know what this problem is because I've uh, you know, used this example before and it's actually this pop-up. It's that the pop-up is kind of, it's open and it's keeping us from, from moving away. And just to quickly fix that, I'm gonna go down here, follow along to L marker, see bind pop-up, open pop-up. We're going to get rid of this open pop-up. What that does is automatically opens it when the map loads. So we can see it's like weird. What's up with that? Um, that does not seem like Vancouver. That <laughs> seems like the bottom of uh, the South Pole. So that's not where we want to be. So what the problem is, is like I said, sometimes coordinates are 
backwards and forwards in different mapping applications. So in this case, I believe this is giving us longitude latitude, but a lot of times the mapping platforms want latitude longitude, so we need to reverse that. And let's see, then see what happens when we open it up. That looks right. So now we're actually in Vancouver. So keep that in mind when you're working with coordinates always, is that if you get a weird result that's like in the middle of nowhere, or the map just won't load, it may be reversal of coordinates. And I do want to zoom out a bit here as well. When we load, it's a little bit too tight. So in this set view call where it runs with the map, there's also a zoom um, property, and that's right here is 13. Now when we say high zoom and low zoom, when we're talking low zoom, we mean someone is far away from the map, or it appears to be far away from the map. Uh, when it's high zoom, it means that they're in high, high detail. So if we say 19 here, we're going to get right into street level almost, really close. And if we say 0, we're way out at the to complete Earth actually repeating itself uh, there. So why don't we go somewhere in between like four? Maybe that's even a little too. Oh, I didn't save. Oh, I could probably go maybe to seven. Oh, again. Oh, it didn't save. There we go. That's not bad. Um, let's see if we can do 7.5. So can you do half a zoom level? You can. You can see. So that's pretty cool. Leaflet also allows you some degree of control over particular um, zoom levels. Now there isn't smooth scrolling. Oh no, it actually doesn't allow you that. It just rounds it to the nearest whole number. So because Leaflet has these specific levels, you can see that like, it's not smooth, then uh, you can only hit it at specific zoom levels. Um, and that's going to apply to a lot of the online maps with the exception of some like Mapbox that has smooth scrolling. And now Google Maps is having that. Anyway, that's a little bit of just centering and zooming. And you could actually call this anywhere. Um, you could, uh, you know, uh, what, let's say someone, this is a function that's running whenever the map is clicked. I could, for instance, recenter the map um, using a call similar to this every time. So just for the sake of me having pasted that, again, if you don't understand, it's, it's OK. I'm just going to drag it over here. And you can see when I click, I have to actually close these. Well, they're, they're, they're keeping me, but you can see these ones. It drags me back a little bit towards Vancouver. And that's because every time I click, it's setting the view to that center and that zoom again. You can even see how I could zoom in. And it would zoom me out. So you can call that any time. That's that view. Now, let's say we want to change the base map here. You can see this says imagery map box. The base map is just referring to the images that are actually the map itself, because these are all small images tiled, as they say. That's why I call them base map tiles. So if we want to go and change those, there's a great site. It's right through the, uh, let's see here, right here, through the base map provider section of the plugin um, in Leaflet. And you can see here there's they go through a GitHub, and we wind up at this leaflet-extras.github.io and leaflet providers preview. This is really a handy site where you can scroll through a lot of different base maps, and you can see right here code that exactly replicates here. So it's very easy for you to, um, this is outrageous, it's very easy for you to get, get a use for any of these, any of these maps. Uh, this is kind of interesting. That's a little crazy for me. Maybe I'll just use this classic like watercolor one for now. So in order to use it, I'm going to go to the top here, and there's this HTML that has this X, Y, Z in these curly brackets. That's really what I'm looking for. And I'm going to replace the stuff that comes just after this L tile layer. So that's all the way to the end of that API key. And that's because they're use, is using Mapbox, which is actually a paid service. You actually need to have a special API uh, key. Now I'm going to get rid of this max zoom and this attribution, just for the sake of being good about it. We'll, we'll keep this attribution, uh, the new one. So that just gives them a little bit of credit for having made the map, base map, and hosting it for you. In this case, it's from a OpenStreetMap. So let's save that and let's reload. 
Yeah, it looks like we're getting a problem. So what is the problem that we're getting? No value provided. Ah, maybe here we need to put a little PNG. There we go. So we just need to make sure that's PNG. And probably if I had copied, you can see here they have X PNG. So uh, in this case, you can see that these correspond to some information here. So hopefully that didn't mess you up a little bit. But you can see you can get these working. And here's our new base map. So kind of cool. We can use that for a variety of things. And uh, now let's move on to some of the geographic shapes. So obviously I still have these geographic shapes emerging, but they're coming over here. So I'm going to move some of them over. And first of all, I'm going to get rid of the marker, since we're going to go over that more in the next section. And I'm going to some copy the coordinates. So the center of our map is right here. That's the latitude and longitude. And we're going to make the center of our circle the same place. So here's the circle. The first two things uh, in it are the coordinates, then this is a radius, and then there's some options, and we're going to get in there and play with that. So let's do that with the, the circle. As you can see, there actually is a little circle there now, so that's cool. Okay, so but I also want to make a polygon here, and uh, I don't want it to be way out in London, and um, so I'm just going to create it using just some faux coordinates here. I'm just going to give it this, and there, and three of the same, and then let's just change one of these like to 124, and one of these to 123.5. Let's just see, we're going to get some kind of shape. It's going to be a little weird, but uh, that's just a line, so we got to change one of these. Let's see. Okay, so we get some kind of shape going on, right? So that's good. All we did is just made up coordinates. You can do the same thing, just so we have some stuff on the map. Uh, and let's get rid of our pop-up functions for now. Okay, so there we are. Very basic. We're just making the map, setting the center, giving the tile layer, adding a circle, adding a polygon. And these have little pop-ups on them with a little bit of information. So when I click them, it says I am polygon or a circle. All right, let's look a little bit at the options of this circle. So you can see here we have color red. We can easily change that to color green. There it is. Or we can make it a hex color, like white. There it is. And it's got different aspects of its color. So you can see its inner color is actually different, and we couldn't see it from way up above because uh, the border is the same width at all heights, but the fill inside gets covered by it. So you can see color is often referring actually to the border. And that's important to remember because for me, I, I would think color associated with the middle, but that's actually fill color. So if we change that, say, to black, let load the page again. And we can't see it, but as we come closer, you can see that it changes. We can also change things like the stroke width, which is going to refer to the border around the outside. And we can make it 0.5. Let's just see what happens when we do that. You can't really tell. It might be a little thinner. Any, in any case, let's go look at some of the options for circles. So here's circle in the documentation for leaflet. And we can see it says circle options. So we click that, it brings us down. And you need to get used to opening up these sub menus that are beneath the options because a lot of the options uh, come from other layers that work the same as circles. So for instance, polygons and circles share a lot of the same options. And uh, you need to open them up. So here we have stroke, weight, opacity, so I was actually wrong. I shouldn't be putting stroke w width. I should probably put uh, weight. Why don't we put that? I might be thinking of some other mapping library. So as we go in now, we can clearly see that it's smaller. It's a clearly smaller border. So we can affect it that way. Um, and let's see here. There's also some things if you want to do dashes. It's a little more complicated. We may talk about it later. It's also different aspects of fill color, fill opacity. Uh, yeah, a lot of different things. And then as you go further, you can see there's other, um, there's also mouse events and, and all sorts of other things that you can do. But we're basically setting the radius here at the beginning. So I'm just going to set it a little larger this time. There we go. And why don't we give the polygon the same style? So all we'd have to do is copy all of this. This is the options object, again, attached here. And after the polygon gets its coordinates, I'm just going to paste in those options, see what happens. 
So they're actually the same now, which is very cool. So if we wanted to, then we could just say our, um, let's say polygon style, because, or let's say shape style, because generally these are some kind of polygonal-ish shape. And uh, I'm just going to take this whole object and make it there. And then we can just pass them in as variables like that and reload it. And there we go. We still have the same basic stuff showing up. So in terms of our options, it's something you're going to have to look through. Uh, we're not going to bother going over all these different things, but it is important to be able to style things in a specific way. Ultimately, you can also do it dynamically. We'll be able to, you know, make circles all a certain color based on some internal property of those circles or some property of the geography that's creating them. For instance, if uh, our circles represent, you know, area, you know, properties or something like that, if it was much smaller, um, then we could color them all differently depending on how expensive those properties are. So in the next section, we're going to move on to markers and pop-ups a little more. These shapes are pretty simple. We're going to put points on the map, uh, change the icons associated with them, and also modify the pop-ups a little. Uh, so I'll see you in the next section.